I am the Commissar, that's my name. Forged Alliance Forever, that's the game. And who have we got with a claim to fame? Today, we're on another 3v3 ladder map, so that means six players are in action. Cold team up here and hot team down here. Let's go in and meet them. Going first for Cold Team, we have Zanduxan. He is 1322 rated and Cybran, and he's in dark blue. Next to him, we have Joker, 1462 rated, UEF, in baby blue. And last but not least, this is Balfron. He is 1285 rated, also UEF, in mauve. And up against them, on the hot team. In one of the two back positions, we have IC, or IC, as I'm going to be referring to him this game. He's 1350 rated, Seraphim in Burgundy. Down here, this is Carl. Carl is 1486 rated, he's Cybran in red. And last but not least, up front for Hot Team, we have Folgum. He's 1235 rated, Seraphim in orange. The map is symmetric on this axis. Everybody has starting hydros, so it's, we're expecting to see your pretty average builds here, and I'm not seeing anything that deviates from them. Balfon's gone a little more for the tree reclaim and a little less for the P gens early on, but other than that, pretty standard. There's this Donny Darko rabbit head here. That's what it makes me think of anyway. Does that age me a bit? When was Donny Darko released? 2001, I think? Anyway, that rabbit head has a decent amount of reclaim on it, more than is scattered around elsewhere, where there's just a bit in front of each base. So that's going to be worth fighting over. It's mainly a drop thing, though you can sneak round here, go through the water and get to it there if you really want. Early Selene's out from Icy, who is not going to raid with them, it seems. He's just going to put them here and have them spot incoming stuff though if i were doing that i would at least have cloaked them and this looks like joker is already planning to drop the plateau out go five engines and he's heading right down here i expect he'll be putting up a land factory as soon as he arrives Meanwhile, Carl has come down, has he come down here? I think that must have been where we walked down. That doesn't look traversable, but it is apparently, so you can walk down there. And he's heading for what looks like to be an edge build on the plateau with his com there, but the com is quite a slow walker, and as a result, I think that this will get a lot more done. Look at that lovely split. Joker has positioned the factory right between the NGs so they move apart and that means that if a bomber comes along the worst it's going to do is take out two of them and the others will likely finish the factory. <clears throat> and he's got, we saw four factories total queued up there. So I think Code Team are going to have a definite early advantage. When it comes to the plateau and as if that weren't enough Balfron is also sending a transport out here. It's coming to drop this mex and reclaim and then out straight to here to get these two big rocks in the middle. However, Carl has brought a transport as well with a mantis and also a bomber. That bomber could get work done though there's already enough up for Joker here that I don't think it's going to do much. A mech marine comes out for Joker and heads across the map. Where's that bomber going? This NG would have been a nice pickup. Okay, these NGs are a nice pickup. Boom! All three of them go down and deny the factory. 
upgrading comms as I see and he spotted the stealth upgrade going down on Xandoxan. Xandoxan going for a quite early tech tool land upgrade, where's he doing it? However, that sounds like shenanigans going on, so let's see what we can see. A couple of labs being countered by Carl's Mantis. And Carl is trying to get factories up to match the ones being built by Joker. And he's also building some with his com here, who's finally reached a position where he can edge build. But Balfron is not to be denied and is bringing in one more NG to finish off that factory and secure his foothold on the plateau. Joker not going for any tech as yet. Balfron already at T2. Xandoxan paused on his way to T2. Have we got any tech on the other team? Nope. Nope. Any of those look like they're on an upgrade? Nope. So it looks like the code team are definitely going for tech earlier and this is quite a big push relative to what Carl has. So it could be that Joker's tanks here are able to evict Carl certainly from the centre where all this tasty reclaim is and maybe from the plateau entirely and if I were Joker I would be doing this I would be bringing a couple of artillery pieces in to try and take out the factories Balthron has finished this factory, he's getting spam up and Carl is producing over here but now he's building down on the floodplain below Eco's looking very even here. But what is Joker's Com doing? Joker's Com is sitting here in the water, naked and unupgraded. Having got stealth, Xanduxan is going for gun, and Balfron's got gun. Forgum is getting gun, Icy has gun, and Carl is naked. So, quite similar upgrades on either side there. Balfon tries to deny this factory of Carl's. Meanwhile, Joker pushes in. Carl's got just enough to hold him off, and those engines were idle though. They could have been building a PD, which might have been quite profitable. But now they're dying as Joker swarms in. And Carl is going around this way, maybe to flank. He'll probably get these engines, but he really needs to worry about this force that's already killed one of his factories. Carl definitely on the back foot here. And this is quite a big push coming in from a hot team. But I think that's more than enough spam to stop it. Balfron is currently rooted to the spot because he's had to pause the nano repair. So he's having to fall back his spam, but Xandoxan with his stealth and gun should be more than enough to see this off. Although if Folgum and Icy can coordinate, that could be good enough. Over here, we have early navy out from Icy in the northern sea, and he's sending a sub to try and lock the sea here so that Cold Team can't get in the water. It's a good play. And Carl is just walking straight forward. He's held off Joker here on the plateau, but we need to be watching here because this fight is going down. Balfon is absolutely tanking it with his gun and his nano and he's got enough spam to see off all of these units. I don't think that Forgum's com with only the gun will be able to prevent it, especially with Icy a bit further back and not actually contributing firepower to the fight. Bomber joins in for okay, joined in for a second before air from the hot team put it down. Zandoxan got in a bit of trouble, but he's regenerating, he's cyber and so he has faster regen and he's got stealth. However, two comes now in the fight. Balfon will have to be careful, despite his nano, he's into the yellow. 
quick note to see that Carl is down here and he's just walking straight past Joker and heading onto Joker's floodplain. But could Forgan be in danger? He's got two comms on him. There's a decent amount of spam from Cold Team, both Balthron and Zandruxan here. And Icy is falling back. We are getting units coming up from Forgum, but he is down into the yellow. Down into the red. 1500, 1300, 1200, 1000 hit points. I don't think he's getting out of this. 300. Boom! Our first ejection at 10 minutes 30. Forgum is defeated by Zandruxan. But while we've been focusing there, look at this. This is great work from Carl who has just been producing non-stop and actually looks to have more spam on the plateau than Joker. Joker's got a PD in defense and he's producing spam assisted by engineers so Carl isn't going to get a wipeout but how the tables have turned on this plateau and Carl is just walking around poking out these mexes with his comm. Interesting position from Icy, he's fallen back to the water so that the, they can't shoot him up. But it does mean that this is a very open front line for Hot Team with two upgraded gun nano and, and gun stealth comms ready to shoot him up and they're massing spam in be behind. Still no tech from Carl here or here. So Carl is all about the T1 and the lines are again getting even out on the rabbit head plateau. We do have T2 air here from Icy and that could be powerful. He ha hasn't yet gone for tech in his navy because several cruisers could do great bombardment work over here if he wanted to. But I think he's going to be more worried. He's got an air support factory at T2 up here, up front. That seems bold. And he's using the T2 engine he got out to build point defences to guard here. And that also seems bold from Carl, putting his T2 HQ right up front in one of his foremost factories. And sure, he has point defences. He's building more, but this is a gun nanocom and gun plus nano beats T2 and there's not even a com here to fight back but there is spam from Carl, there is not spam from Icy, that's just engineers looks like Balfon feels he doesn't want to push it though and that could be sensible especially with this big wave of T1 bombers meanwhile over here Carl has come and just popped all these mexes and that does mean that Hot Team has a slight eco lead. But where Carl did all this damage with his comm, Joker has Riptides coming to return the favour and Balfon is under actually quite heavy attack from the air. He, but he's got inties, so has Carl. But Balfon is hiding under shields. He's down into the red though. Could we be about to see Balfon getting popped at 4,300 hit points? He's under his shields, but I think these will save him. These black tanks pulling up behind. And suddenly there's very much less in the way of air presence from Hot Team. And Balfon escapes. Coward, says Carl. Meanwhile, Icy has been using his time in the water to get Nano. It's going quite slowly. But I think now it's time to pause and we note that Zandjokzan is going for T3 land whereas Hot Team have only got one T2 land factory between them at the moment. So let's have a quick check of player ecos. So here we are looking at Balfron. He's pretty balanced on everything really that is very good except I'd prefer not to be relying on my teammates for even that tiny trickle of energy but he does have a lot in storage so he should be fine also good balance from Zanduxan I like that slightly overspending mass but not much and same story for Joker very good balance 
Carl, though, is horrifically power stored. Where's it all going? Can't immediately see. Is he upgrading an air factory? Nope. Okay, don't know about that, but... And he's also hugely overspending mass, which is the only reason he's no longer power stored. I see also not great on power. He's losing it. He'll need to build some P-Gens soon. So overall, I prefer Cold Team's eco balance to that of Hot Team. But check this out, down on the plateau. That is a lot of pillars from Joker. I think that might be enough to wipe Carl off the plateau. And Icy has sent in a Vothal gunship. And Carl has sent an awful lot of bombers. And we can see on the minimap there that Balfon is responding with Inties. But I don't know whether these bombers are going to be enough. Because sure, they're not being counted at the moment. But there aren't any Inties supporting them. And therefore, these Indies from Balfour will clean them up for free. And anyway, even if they weren't being attacked, I think that we would see these pillars smash out all of Carl's factories before the bombers had a chance to work through them. And there are T2 point defences going up here from the factories, from these engineers who came out of the factories that built the pillars. And sure, some of these are going to escape and maybe kill Balfour's factory over here, but... It looks to me like Cold Team are going to take that plateau. Meanwhile, Icy comes out of the water. He's got Gun and Nano now, but he's up against a Gun Nano Com here, a Gun Nano Com here, decent amounts of spam. So he may have to be careful. And he's actually going straight back into the water. I would have come this way myself. And we're seeing M MMLs being set up for the Cold Team, which is a good response to the PDs, which appear to be the only defence that Hot Team are using in this area right now. Ooh, Zanduksan's tanks have killed the naval yards down here, which is quite nice. And if you can get an NG in there, then that is a good amount of reclaim. Look, that's what, 1500 reclaim in there. I see is retreating up here. There's an attempt at a Riptide run by from Joker, but there are point defences everywhere, and Cold Team aren't getting through there. However, despite losing the naval yard, these submarines remain concealed here, which will stop the Cold Team getting into the sea. More Jokers f from. Riptide, more Riptides from Joker. But Icy is able to see them off easily enough. Meanwhile, Carl is heading back to base. He's still naked, the only comm who's still naked. And we might need some comms here because this looks like quite a big push coming in from Cold Team. And you can see that wave advancing, but I think those comms need to be nearer the front, because as it is, there's nothing to do the damage while the shields are still able to protect them. There's just a little trickle of spam, and that is all going to be dead before the comms get here to actually do any damage. And so I think that they're going to be forced to retreat. And on top of that, we've seen Carl defending on the plateau with bombers, now he's defending here with bombers. And sure, there is flak in there, but every little helps. However, the point defence proves more than enough, and Cold Team are forced to retreat, leaving a decent amount of reclaim. That's what, 8,000 reclaim there? That's quite a lot. However, the MMLs are increasing in number and are likely soon to be doing their job. Engineers coming round here from Joker planning to set up a factory. That means that with these riptides, it looks like not only the Rabbit Head Plateau, but the Southern Floodplain as well are all going to be in the hands of Cold Team, and Hot Team will be confined basically to their starting base. Not a position I would like to be in, were I Hot Team. And we see the M MMLs. 
MMLs. How many M's in MMLs? Two, but I appear to think there are more. Anyway, Carl has brought his comm here, and he is the last comm to start an upgrade, going for the gun upgrade, so he is planning to use him in defence here, I think. And not a moment too soon, because look at this, those point defences are just being missiled out, and what can they do to stop them? Well, they can build TMDs, but is that going to be enough? There were also TMDs going up here, and several TMDs are pretty good, so... That said, they're not good enough to stop these PDs dying, and the hot team are going to have to rely on these further back PDs. I see tries nudging himself forward, but he's now got to worry about this Percy as well. Of course, Percy's are pretty good against comms as well as XBs, thanks to their massive alpha damage. And this is quite dangerous over here. This is a big swarm of riptides coming in across the water. And we can see that text notification telling us where the comm for Carl is. So sure, he's under the water and the riptides can't shoot him. But if he wants to come out, he might have to brave quite a lot of riptides. And even with the gun, that's going to be a challenge. But he does have a decent 4C composition here in order to see them off, and it looks like that's what he is planning to do. So here comes Carl, heading out of the water. He's got Ophiums in here, he's got Ilshis in here. The Riptides open up on him, and look at that pain! Immediately, he's down to half health. But he continues to back away, and in come the Ophiums, in come the Ilshis, and those Riptides are quickly, well, I would say seen off, but they're more like seen to the bottom of the pond as they are quite quickly massacred by Carl's forces. But does Carl have enough to make a counter push? There are several Percy's in here, supported by shields and flak, and of course there's Zandoxan's gun nanocom over there, and Zandoxan is now bringing in loyalists of his own as part of this heap of spam. I don't think Carl has enough to push. I like the choice of a sniper bot, that's going to do good work against the Percy's. And he could do with more of those, they would also do good work against the mobile missile launchers. So here comes Carl, heading out with his counter push. But is it going to be enough? That's just enough Percy's that I don't think he's got enough. However, it looks like the Cold team disagree with me, and if not retreating, they're at least consolidating a bit further back, but... Zandexan's com comes forward and opens fire. They ping him, but he's already overcharged one of the Othiums, and this army is standing still, so the mobile missile launchers are getting free damage, taking out the sniper bot. And that's enough to make Carl feel that he has to fall back, and I agree. Had he kept on moving, I think he would have done a bit more damage, because he wouldn't have lost so much to the mobile missile launchers, but as things stand, that might have been a wasted opportunity. Over here, we see that Joker has now got up to T3 air and is building his first T3P gen. So, there is at least some T3 air presence going to be there for the core team, and they're going to need it because, as well as the ASFs guarding the front line from IC, he's got a couple of strats out, and without a counter to strats, th those could do a lot of damage, like get in the back here, bomb here, bomb here. A couple of world placed bombs could take out a lot of Xanduxan's eco, and boy do they need it, because looks like we've got a 2 to 1 eco lead here for Cody. Okay, that must have been a power store, but that's still 60 eco per tick that core team of ahead and they've gathered about 15 to 20 K more mass total so any eco damage that a hot team can inflict is desperately needed. Carl's suggesting though is to start a chicken and here it is the Ethotha assault bot Balfon's going for artillery here.
but so is Carl. So we're setting up for a bit of a face-off here. Meanwhile, I think, but just as Carl has started this chicken, Xanduxan has started a monkey, but he's got less bird power on it. And Carl has more eco than Xanduxan because Carl's got two bases. So he's able to throw a decent amount into that chicken. I think the chicken will be finished first. Speaking of eco, let's check on player ecos. Looking here at Balfon, his eco is beautifully balanced. That's amazing. Joker doing less well. He is stalling. Well, he's not stalling for power, but he is leeching off his teammates. And he is working on a T3P gen while building a Continental transport. And that will undoubtedly be why. Now, a Continental sounds like we're going to see some Percy drops. So let's watch out for those coming up. And Xanduxan, also good balance. He's spending a bit more than he's making, but he's got math in the bank to spend, and he's got just that little bit of power overflow so that he's not stalling. He can overcharge if necessary, but he's not wasting power. Very good. Carl, he's still spending rather more math than he's making, though. It's not as bad as it was before, and it's understandable given how much he's putting into this chicken, which he's going to need. Look what he can see. He can see this force here. That's quite a big a load of dudes coming in, but I think they're only scouts, they're only scouts. And how's Icy doing? Well, Icy is also very well balanced, so generally good eco-management from everybody in this game. Let's go back to the overview. And we are not a moment too soon, because look at this, we have a Percy drop coming in by Continental, and they've taken damage from the flak, they've taken damage from the Continental falling on them. But... Boom, down goes a mechs, down goes another mechs. Immediately they're doing damage. And they're taking out a number of the PDs, but Carl is defending with bombers and Carl has more PDs. But those T1 bombers are gonna take a lot of time to work through the okay, never mind. Those strat bombers are gonna be a lot better at cleaning up the Percy's. And he may manage to get a little more damage done here. But I don't think it's going to be far. Now look at that. That's going to die pretty soon. But there's another lot of Percy's coming out from this factory that Joker's put up down here. And they are massing in the pond under the water. And I don't know if Carl can see them. No, I don't think he can. Because if he could, he'd send this chicken, or at least a couple of Othiums, to come down here and hold them off. But that chicken is just heading straight forward to come and take out this army here, or try to. That's a big army. And what are all these Selenes doing? Why would he surround it with a bunch of Selenes? Is he trying to do, like, fake jamming here? Surely there have been a couple of scouts over here. Surely they know what's going on. Is he just trying to deflect some of the fire? The chicken has been pung, so they know that that's the chicken. And the chicken immediately falls back. Is he trying to kite them into the PD, perhaps? But he's going to have to be careful, because those Percy's are now advancing. We can see that notification that Xanduxen has completed his experimental, his monkey lord. But that's all the way at the back. You can see it on the mini-map there. And so it won't be helping out a great deal. These Percy's have... Oh, they could have come here and done some damage, but they're retreating to the water thanks to the attack of the strats. That's some good strat defense from Icy, and the chicken is indeed following. Oof. The Percy's are under the water again, and safe, but... Interesting, where's that chicken going? But we have to watch over here now because there is a big attack coming in from Xanduxan, taking advantage of the fact that the chicken is now over here. But he knows that there's an awful lot of PD and the strats are not going to make matters easy for him. It doesn't look like there's a great deal of flak in there and the strats come over here, one more pass and they'll take out that clink hammer. And Xanduxan did not have enough. He's being forced to retreat again. The straps don't go for the clink hammer. I would have gone for that. 
and the Percy's fall back a bit. Perhaps they're going to try and trap the chicken. We did mention earlier that Percy's are a great way to kill experimentals. So this pond is actually deep enough for the chicken to get all the way under it, so riptides would not be an appropriate solution here. And looks like Joker knows that because he continues to produce Percy's. And all the Percy's have to do is follow the chicken and shoot it when it pops out of the water, just like that. Now the strats are heading for that clink hammer or possibly, uh, no that was a clink hammer, it was the UEF, and they take it out. But we've now got T3RT joining in the bombardment here, as well as T3 Mobile Arty that is, as well as the MMLs, and we also have a monkey heading forward. That monkey has finally reached the front lines. And if he pushed with this army, he might get some work done. Because they know where the chicken is. Another chicken is nearly done, though. And again, the chicken for Carl pops out the water here, heads forward. Near miss for Joker there. If he'd been a little later, that chicken might have caught him. But that chicken is taking an awful lot of damage from Percy's. And it's not turning around and shooting at them. That chicken needs to stop and kill the Percy's. I mean, sure, it's trying to get deep into the base to use its Ion Storm on some of these P-Gens and so forth. But there were also ravages going up, the chickens into the red, that's not going to get anywhere. Now it turns, but it's too little, too late, and the Percy's are blasted to pieces. Meanwhile, that monkey has not chosen to push in with the army. It's coming around the side. But... Carl has this chicken complete now and waiting for him. His comm is retreating just in case he gets accidentally in the way of a monkey laser. But chicken beats monkey and in combination with all this T2PD from Carl, I don't think that chicken will have a problem stopping the monkey. Or at least it won't have actually, you know, goes to fight the monkey, which it isn't at present. There we go, it turns around. Out comes the monkey, it's taking a lot of damage just for free. Bombers come in, the chicken comes in. That was only a T1 air factory and wasn't doing anything. That monkey was essentially wasted. Meanwhile, Icy has dropped into the sea again, trying to rebuild his neighbor presence and is building torpedo launchers. But this brick is torpedoing the torpedo launchers right back. I think in the end, since he can't actually kill the NGs because the NGs hover, that the brick will go down and down it goes. So maybe Icy will be able to re-establish his presence. That's a lot of Percy's from Joker. Meanwhile, we're seeing a big air combat, which it looks like Hot Team has driven away the ASFs for Joker. Balfon's Inties have chased, but to no avail, and Hot Team kill the Inties. Are they going to withdraw? I think they should. There are Sams here. But they could get a nice turn on these ASFs from Zanduxan, and they do. This feels like it's definitely going to be air control for the hot team. Those strats still alive. And a third one being produced right now. Good on Icy for making use of his air control now that he knows he's got it. TMDs as well, well protecting the naval yard that's going up. If I were Icy, I would be going straight for T2 because air and, well, air is going to be the only real risk here. 
to his Navy presence thanks to his subs stopping the color team getting any naval foothold and he can just park a bunch of cruisers here and Sarah missile these bases. Navy Cummings is Balfour and he's not wrong and indeed Icy is going straight for T2. Is that a nuke launcher I see for Carl? I do believe it is. Does anybody up here have SMD? Now, I may be looking through it, my loyal viewers, but it looks to me like the answer is no. I'm not seeing any SMD. So if that gets loaded, and it's already nearly loaded, that could be utterly brutal. And that's quite a big force of strats now am amassing for Icy. And boy does he need it. Look at that eco. 350 eco ahead. That's 50% ahead. The code team. And oop, in come the strats. What are they heading for? Looks like these Percy's. I would actually be inclined to try and come snipe with that many strats, but that is brutal. That entire army just wiped by strats, and the strats get away, no losses. Okay, I take that back. That was a great play from Icy. Meanwhile, Joke is completed in XB, and that's a Novax. So we're getting a satellite station up. chicken comes out of the water and prepares to defend so we are now in a standoffish shorter phase of the game with that Novaps there and this nuke here. More monkeys coming up from Carl and there goes the nuke where's it going it's going straight into Joker's base. Joker starts running is he gonna get out maybe but that's a beautifully placed nuke it's gonna get the Novaks it's going to get the air grid. It's going to get the mexes. It's going to get everything. In it comes. Joker runs. Yeah, Joker's com is not going to be at risk of actual death here. But you know what is going to be at risk of actual death? Boom. Joker's entire base is obliterated. All of it. Or the Mexes, or the Novices, or the HQs, everything. And suddenly Joker is... Well, he's actually not that crippled economically because he's got all of this area. The strats come out again in defence. There is now T3 anti-air and they'll have to worry about that. But Joker needs to rebuild his... HQ, he needs to rebuild his mexes. He's going to be limited essentially to this big horde of Percy's for the time being. And there are the crew, but somehow, sneakily, Code Team have got into the water. There I was saying they wouldn't make it thanks to those subs. There's still one sub here, but Code Team are in the water and getting out T1 subs, which is the correct response to cruisers. We have SCUs putting up anti-air turrets in the water, but looks like IC has noticed that his subs have been taken out and is sending out a destroyer of his own to handle this force from Xanduxan, so very good play there from IC. We're getting an SMD going up, but I think that is not going to be loaded by the time that Carl is able to fire again. I don't think Carl actually has SMD of his own. No, he, there's one going up for his team, belonging. Yeah, he's building it, but he's poor. He's poor. He's taken the assistance off it, and he's just looking to get out another nuke.
This cruiser is going to die to subs. This cruiser is going to die to torp bombers, which Zendizan has built. He's probably going to lose the torp bombers since there are still two cruisers here, and there's that Sam back here. Those SCUs have noted the subs, built T1 torps, and with the destroyer, they have cleaned them up. But now there aren't any cruisers left, and Icy's going to have to build a few more. Meanwhile, remember we said that you could get down here just about on land. Well, that's exactly what Icy has done with a horde of support commanders, and he's reclaiming the floodplain. If he can come in and destroy this factory before Joker gets his T3HQ back up, that would be pretty nice for a hot team. And another nuke goes off. If hot team can bring it back from their now still 350 eco deficit that's going to be amazing and this is a beautiful defensive nuke look at this defensive nuke don't you just love to see a vast horde of t3 units being utterly obliterated in a single nuke hit isn't that beautiful and now there is nothing to stand in the way of the experimental push one chicken two monkeys horde of sniper bots horde of offumes that's more than enough to smash its way over what's left. Look at that nuke with 200,000 mass killed. That's amazing. And Joker is throwing mass at his teammates because he just doesn't have the ability to spend. He's upped this factory to his T3... Um, T3... HQ now, but he presumably doesn't have the power yet, he's already got one T3P gen there, and so he's forced to have, uh, a moment ago he'd paused this factory, He was, and he, now he's paused it again, he's forced to pause this factory, and just donate his mass. Carl finishes a Mega, but I don't think that's going to be needed to be honest. Because forward comes his main army and now is the time to strike when the enemy don't have anything. And he's not really assisting this nuke anymore, he's throwing all his resources into experimentals. Is this a strap snipe coming in for... well, there's a duke under construction by Balfron, which would be a good answer. But is this strap snipe going to take it out? Looks like the answer is no, because Icy didn't support it enough with his ASFs, and so this horde of T3 anti-air, the SAMs, and the ASF from Xanduxan just killed it, and the Duke wasn't even hurt, the comms weren't hurt, or the strats were dead. But we can't celebrate for Coltine too soon, because there is still a great big army of experimenters charging into the base. They're desperately putting up Ravagers, but I don't think that Ravager build will be fast enough. There is actually a crab here for Xanduxan, and it has taken offence at those monkeys and is shooting at them. But they don't have a chance. All that monkey and that chicken need to do is target the ACU. Boom! Down goes Balfron. Down goes Joker. And Team Zanduxan, the code team, recall from the battle. Somehow, somehow, Hot Team have won. How on earth did they come back from 300 eco down and 25% map control? Where did Cold Team go wrong? Obviously, not having an anti-nuke was one answer. Did they not see the nuke? Did they just forget about it? Tell me what you thought in the comments below. While you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and obey. I'm the Commissar, and I will see you next time.